While walking along this uh, dirt road next to a farmer's field, I found something interesting on the side of the road. Now it's kind of a sad sight, but it's also interesting and I want to share it with you. Uh, the animal that you see right here, just under the leaf cover there, is a the famous Japanese giant hornet. This is the largest hornet in Japan, and I believe it may be the largest hornet in the world. These insects are called uh, susumebachi in Japanese, which means uh, sparrow, uh, sparrow bee or sparrow wasp. Susume means sparrow, and uh, the word hachi means bee, and the b is changed in, the h is changed to a b when the two words are put together. I don't know why this insect is dying. It's very sad to see it dying. Um, but it's a, a great chance to actually look at this insect up close. The, normally they're very hard to get a good close look at these. Uh, these insects uh, um, are actually quite large. Uh, let me put my finger quite carefully up close to the insect and you can get an idea. I have to be careful here. Let's see how, how large it is. There's the tip of my finger and there's the wasp. Very, very big. Now I do have to be careful. I know I'll get some comments about my foolish behavior here. I have to be careful because uh, these uh, hornets are in fact dangerous. They uh, kill about 75 people a year here in Japan. Uh, mainly folks who are, or maybe exclusively folks who are allergic to the uh, uh, toxin that they release through their stinger. Uh, the uh, susume bachi are not necessarily aggressive when they're wandering around looking for uh, doing their work buzzing around in the field. However, if you bump into their nest, they create hives in hollow trees and underground. If you bump into their nest or step on their nest, they will swarm out of the nest and uh, ambush and uh, repeatedly sting somebody. And they'll chase you down. So, um, and if you're allergic to their venom, uh, that can be a, a serious problem. Um, so the word here in Japan, the advice is that if you disturb a susumebachi nest, you're supposed to just run like crazy just to get away from it as fast as you can. And the stories of uh, hiking parties where every member is scattering in each direction are, 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 are legend here in Japan. Now you see the large mandibles there? And those mandibles are used for a very specific purpose, to kill bees. But one of the ways that the susumebachi makes its living is that the uh, lone scouts, such as this insect, will be uh, will look for honeybee uh, nests and when they find a nest they will um, return to their own nest and uh, bring their hive back and the hive will basically kill all of the bees in the nest and then I believe they, they consume the honey in the nest um, and they use their large mandibles here to kill the bees they can quickly uh, decapitate or cut in half a bee with those and uh, apparently that these large uh, a swarm of these can kill all of the bees in a honeybee hive within two hours. Um, now the bees are not without a defense. The honeybees, the, the indigenous honeybees of Japan, the native bees, have a clever trick they use. If a susumebachi, a lone susumebachi, enters their hive, they will, almost on cue, swarm over the susumebachi, basically engulfing its body with their own bodies. This causes the temperature to begin to rise. Now the susumebachi has, will die at a slightly lower temperature than the honeybee. And as the temperature rises, the susumebachi is then killed by the rising temperature while the honeybees are, are, uh, survive. Many honeybees will be killed by, the, by that one susumebachi in the process, but the result is that it saves the hive. And um, the imported honeybees, the commercial honeybees that are brought into Japan, don't have that clever trick and they're susceptible to uh, uh, being killed by the marauding susumebachi groups. Oh, a nice close-up shot there. Boy, this is really rare. I, I've never been able to get close to a live susumebachi like this. Normally they're buzzing about the field very fast and I can only glimpse them. I've never been able to get any video of this fascinating insect. I'm sad to see this one dying, but I'm grateful for the chance to film it. You see the uh, large, co large compound eyes in the front and then the smaller uh, collection of eyes at the, almost on the forehead there? It's interesting how they, uh, as all insects do, they have those multiple eyes like that. Um, one more point about the uh, susumebachi, uh, or, or bees and wasps in general. If you've noticed the similarity in the body structure to that of an ant, that's because ants and uh, bees and wasps are in fact related. I believe they're part of the same order Formicidae. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, I believe that uh, bees, and, wa bees were der and wasps came first, and that ants then derived from that. Again, someone will correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not certainly not an expert, just a little I picked up along the way. Well, anyway, uh, one more uh, glimpse. I'll put my finger up close again, try to get an idea of this. Try not to get stung. Wow, very large. It's so sad to see it dying. 
It's a common thing though to see insects, look, big insects dying at this time of the year, the large uh, spiders as, as the cool air uh, closes in of uh, winter. Amazing. Thanks for dropping by to have a, a look, a rare glimpse, up close glimpse of a live Susume Bachi in the wild. Sadly it's dying, but at least we can, uh, we can uh, get the chance to get an idea of what it looks like. Oh, look at that close up of that leg. Wow. If you ever run across one of these on your own in Japan, just be careful, and if it comes after you, just remember, run like the wind. <laughs>